Hey guys, Ting Ting here. Today, I'm going to be explaining how to get CFG and negative prompts working with Flux. If you try to use CFG with Flux, you probably notice that it just doesn't work. The image just gets completely destroyed and it doesn't really function with the Flux models. Getting CFG to work is important since without CFG, then the negative prompt can't work. There are a few different methods that you can use for getting this to work. I'm going to be going through these in this video. We're going to be using Comfy UI here as usual. The model we're using here, we have Flux Dev, which is the regular model that I use in all the videos. We have the T5F16, the Clip L. When it comes to the prompt here, the only part of the problem that actually matters is this part here. Behind her are several analog televisions with different colors adding to the fun quirky vibe of the image with various K-pop music videos shown. This is the only part of the image that really matters. The rest of the image just describes a woman sitting on a chair and what she's wearing and these things. The rest of the prompt doesn't matter insofar as the thing is concerned. This is what the image looks like with CFG at 1, which is essentially turning the CFG off. The important thing to note is in the back here, the fact that we have K-pop. Remember that being part the K-pop on the analog televisions. That's the part we're focusing on. You could see in the background here, there might be some vague k popiness aesthetic here, but you could say that largely that part of the prompt was ignored. And that's why we're focusing on that part of the prompt here. And then here, I, I set the CFG here to 5. And I'm using EULA normal 20 steps at 768 by 1024. But if I generate an image just as is, then the image I get is this. Basically, a completely unusable blob. This is what it looks like if you try to use CFG in Flux. Obviously, this is unworkable, right? But there's a way to fix it. There's a few different methods that we have here. We have dynamic thresholding. We have automatic CFG, skim CFG, uh, tone map and unconditioned zero. We're going through all of these in the video, but we're going to be starting with dynamic thresholding. If you add a dynamic thresholding node and then connect it now to your CFG guider, if you're not using the guider based system, you just have the regular K sampler. It's the same thing, by the way. So the first thing you want to do is using this, you want to set this down to one. The mimic scale, you want to set it to one. This is a CFG you want to emulate, essentially. With mimic mode, you want to set this to half cosine up and CFG mode, you also want to set this to half cosine up. There's a lot of different settings here. I've tried like a bunch of different combinations. It's extremely hit or miss. And considering that this seemingly was the best one that I found working and also one that people seem to be using online maybe there's some different combination of of these that that would work better but half go sign up seems to be wait what you want to do on both of these these are the only settings that you actually need to change here make sure your cfg guider because you set this to one here but this is where you set your actual cfg by the way right so make sure to I have this here. We still have it at five. This was what the initial image that we had generated at. Okay, after we generate our image with dynamic thresholding, so we have our original image. This is the original, uh, our original CFG here at five. This is our original, this is what the image looks like at a base. And this is what the generated dynamic thresholding image looks like. And if you zoom in here, you can see in the background very clearly these, the images that are on the screen. Well, first off, the entire image looks more realistic. Uh, I forgot to talk about the negative prompt. The negative prompt that I have, keep in mind, at CFG of 1, the negative prompt is ignored. It doesn't exist if the CFG is 1. Keep that in mind, right? So this only works at CFG more than 1. But we have ugly CCTV dashcam anime cartoon screenshot. That's what we have the negative prompt here. Yeah, but going back to it here, you can see that the image is higher quality, looks more realistic, better than the initial image here. Um, so that would be the negative prompt. But more importantly, the K-pop part of the image is much more highlighted. The exception of this part, this is definitely significantly more indicative of a K-pop style. And then same with this. Whereas when you compare to the initial image, you could, when you compare to the initial image here, you could see that you could barely make out any K-pop aesthetics in the background. The only thing is this screen doesn't look like K-pop with the exception of the red lips, which K-pop artists tend to have a lot of. This image in general is just a lot more realistic as well. Moving on, automatic CFG. And this is important. When it comes to working with CFG, there's also another downside. One of the major downsides is as soon as you add CFG, the actual generation process slows. It ends up around double the regular generation time. I'm mentioning that because dynamic thresholding was slowed down by being about like double uh, the generation time. However, automatic CFG does not suffer from that speed loss. So we have the same thing here, five CFG, except we have this. And the image we get from this is, we get this image. So looking here, we can see, looking at the background here, there is obviously a change from the initial image, looking at the screens. However, I wouldn't say it exactly has represented the K-pop aesthetic better. Keep in mind, this is without a speed hit, where dynamic thresholding did have a speed hit. So that is to be considered here. However, 
Um, I wouldn't say that these necessarily are blowing our stocks off. So this had 5 CFG. I decided to increase the CFG to 10. I would say in this image, the background is significantly more K-popified. We have people, you have double people here that looks kind of more K-pop. Not as K-pop as dynamic thresholding, but still it's it has this K-pop aesthetic. And this one also as well has the K-pop aesthetic. This one a little bit more so, and not so much this one, but still a little bit more. Automatic CFG seems to be that the effect is a bit less, but you do so without having to take a massive speed hit. So this is the easiest CFG to add if you don't want to like dramatically slow down your generation process. Okay, now we have skimmed CFG. And skim CFG is the same thing. We just connect this here to the CFG guider. And the image we get from that is this image. And again, this is similar to automatic CFG, but we can see here that the image immediately gives more of the K-pop aesthetic in the background, and the actual realism of the image, skin-wise, is increased. But the important part I would say is, this maintains the structure of the image more similar to the original image, um, whereas I felt like dynamic threshold link changed things a bit more. I also tried this one at a higher CFG as well, at 10 CFG, and I felt that it improved things. Like this part here is more K-popified than the, in the initial one that looks like some random lady. And then same with this lady in the corner here, more K-popified as well. So it's listening to the prompt better, which is the important thing about TFG, which is something that you miss with Flux, especially when you start adding a ton of elements. It starts to be hard for Flux to have every single individual element represented in your image, which is where CFG comes in to force the model to be more representative of what it is that you want. I'd say skim CFG right now, uh, dynamic threshold link seemingly is, is resulting in the most realistic image, even though it changes the image a lot, right? Um, so it might be, maybe if you don't like that, then I think skim CFG would be in the close second, and then automatic CFG, assuming that you don't want any speed trade-offs, because all of them, with the exception of automatic CFG, have a speed trade-off. Next up, we have tone map. We have model, model sampler tone map noise test. Keep in mind, in order to get this, you can't download this off of the, the traditional Comfy UI manager. You have to get it from a Reddit post. You have to go and download that special version. Keep in mind, I understand if people don't want to download that. Okay, if you don't want to download it, okay, fine. But I'll link the Reddit post where you can go and find the thing there. But this is a modified version. You have to download the modified version and copy it into your Comfy UI folder. With the model sampler tone map noise test, that's a mouthful. With this one, there's a bunch of different application method you have here right uh, you want to swap over here i think the default is fixed multiplier you want to put it on cfg multiplier mapping and then yeah i tried all of these and i can show you here the test that i did okay so long story short i can show you i'd say most of these images are quite samey right if you look at them this is the rhine comfy it looks like this one this this looks like this this one looks like that and we have uh manny took this one this one this one i'd say largely these images are very samey However, this image, on the other hand, was completely different. This was on the, the Drago um, one. And this ended up looking way better than the other images. Way, way, way better, right? Of course, uh, when I saw it, it looked so different from the other images. I kind of assumed that it might have been a fluke or something. And, and maybe it is. But I decided to dig a little bit deeper and generate a few more images now. Uh, with this prompt, but on different seeds. All of these images share the same seed. And I got these images, which all were insane as well. All of these ones were really good. And again, you can look at the K-pop in the background here. We're very clearly representing the K-pop. And all of these images are way more real, realistic. Keep in mind, the person who made this modification, I think they have tests as well. Like in the post where I link access to the, the tone map plugin, the person who made this has tests. I think the one that they recommended was actually the filmic. This is the filmic um, preset. I didn't like this one at all. <laughs> I didn't really like it. Uh, but this is the one that they were recommending, the filmic one. Maybe it's just with this image, maybe it's just with this one. I, I, I didn't really like this one. But this was the one that, that they were recommending, right? And Ryan Comfy, this one here, is the default setting, basically. Look at all these images and then look at Drago. It's like a completely different thing. So, like, yeah, definitely it seems Drago was kind of ahead of the pan. This is probably what you want to be looking at if you're generating images which is CFG. Okay, the next one we have is Unconditioned Zero. And the image we get here is again we can look at the background more k-popified uh, a lot of reflections added in more similar to how dynamic thresholding look it added in cool reflections here this one on the other hand again this is the basic image so we're just going to compare back here so you can see here that the, the big differences that exist the colors got too contrasty is what it, it, it felt like here but i'd say overall better than this image clearly 
more listening to the prompt here and more realistic in general. If we go back to the top here, we have the CFG guider. I know I said you could use the K sampler. However, if you want to do this, you're going to need to have this setup. But you could swap out the CFG guider and have the adaptive guider. Again, this is a, a plugin that you have to download. But you add this here in, in place of the CFG guider. And the cool thing about this is what it does is because with CFG, when you're running it, it actually slows down the generation process. What this does, because the CFG is slower and it actually is twice as slow uh, when you're using the CFG, what this does is use the CFG. It makes comparisons with the generated image and what the image would look like if it had no like guidance at all, if there's no CFG at all. And when they're within a certain degree of similarity, it just stops using the CFG. It stops using the initial CFG. And the important part about that is you don't have to take the performance hit anymore since you're not using the CFG anymore, right? That's that's what this. So you just add this in replacement of your guider and you add this in here like this. Important to note, this with automatic CFG is already uh, bypassing that process. So it doesn't work with that. Skim CFG just breaks. The image just breaks. OK, so it effectively doesn't work with this. So the ones that ultimately worked were dynamic thresholding, the tone map and on condition zero. So I'm going to show you the images here. And there's a, a, a prevailing theme here. So this is with dynamic thresholding. And what you'll notice is both of these images at a distance, they look very similar. However, if you zoom in, you'll see clear differences here where the original image, the one on the left, is very clearly um mo has more detail than the image on the on the right. Her skin is much smoother. So yes, the images are basically the same, but the higher level detail is not there. This is some this is something that you end up seeing being missed with adaptive guidance. This right here, by the way, this is what happens with skim. This is CFG of five. This is with skim CFG. OK, <laughs> this is what happens. I told you that skim CFG breaks with adaptive guidance. You can see that the image is slightly different. OK, there's slightly different, completely nothing. Um, but I just decided to record this anyway. because I thought it was funny. So yeah, skim CFG does doesn't work with this. So now this is with the tone map. We can go in again. You can see there's detail here. Detail in her things, detail on her skin. You can see that she has like acne and these things. That That's part of the prompt. I know I didn't go into the prompt in depth, but this is stuff that's there. But if you go over here, her entire skin, everything, it just smooths out. That extra layer of detail smooths out. The image doesn't look nearly as good. In a, like a quick one-to-one -one comparison, it just doesn't look as good. And that's one thing that happens is like, you get the image faster. In case you're wondering what the speed up is, the speed up is about 25%. Keep in mind, this is on my system. On your system, it might be different. I have a 3070, which has 8 gigabytes of VRAM and 64 gigabytes of RAM. So your, you might be different, but for me, it's a 25% speed up when I use adaptive guidance. So you can see here, a reduction in quality. You can say if that's a worthy trade-off as far as you're concerned. With this one, though, with the unconditional zero, though, there was an interesting thing here. Because with this one here, I would say that the detail was reduced. But on condition zero, it probably was too sharp. The image was a little bit too sharp. So this version, I would say, despite re removing a lot of the details, probably looks better than the initial image. I felt like the initial image was a little too contrasty. There was a little too much high level details. And this actually looks better when it smooths out a little bit. Yeah, well, anyway, guys, hopefully you learned something today about CFG and Flux and, and the ways of getting around some of these limitations. I've definitely heard people asking, how to use CFG, what, what's going on, how to use negative prompts, it doesn't work, whatever. This is how you do it. You simply just have to, if you add a negative prompt without CFG turned on, it will do nothing, okay? So what you need to simply do is add in these and then obviously it fixes your issue. Hopefully this helped you. If you liked the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel and yeah.